Welcome to Conversations with Dr. Stephen Greer. This is Dr. Greer, and I'm joined today uh, with uh, Dr. Ted Loader, and we're going to bring you an update on the work of the orionproject.org and our search for uh, energy solutions that would definitively get the planet on the path of sustainability and abundance. So welcome, Dr. Loader. Well, thank you, Steve. It's a pleasure to be with you this afternoon. Yeah, just in, in brief, I want to just thank everyone who supported the, the Orion Project. Uh, those of you who are new to uh, the World Fusion Network show, we started this project almost three years ago, three years ago in, in March. And our initial goal was to raise the funds to uh, build a laboratory uh, here near the University of Virginia where we could gather together some of the scientists that we've identified up to that point. At this point, we have a, a many more uh, really excellent scientists, and some of whom have actually worked in uh, government programs on the sort of free energy, quote unquote, or uh, unusual uh, electromagnetic systems. And uh, we are still, we have a new proposal to uh, have a research and development uh, center developed where we could do that. One of the things that didn't happen right away was, of course, have enough funds to build a facility. So we have provided a, no, a number of grants to people, some of whom are still doing some experimentation. But the idea and the vision behind the Orion Project has been to do the synergy, uh, the networking, and bring all these people together to develop the sciences under one roof. Uh, and the reason for that is that many people who try to do this on their own have hit a lot of technical barriers to being able to do it. Uh, and they really need the help of material science people or they need uh, the help of a very specialized area of, of physics or electromagnetics or mechanical engineering or any number of areas. And so we really feel that the best way to get to the objective of a, uh, a new technology that would run your house or your car without any outside input, and that is what is called over-unity, meaning that you're pulling energy out of the zero-point energy field of the space around us or uh, some other a type of phenomenon that would enable you to get off of the grid and off of the coal-fired power systems and uh, what have you. There has to be this kind of teamwork, and uh, so that's still our objective. So uh, thanks to the people who've done this support, we've done a lot to identify the people around the world who have potential, who could be brought under one roof, and we're still looking to get <clears throat> the majority of this uh, funding in place. So that's what, what we haven't achieved yet is to uh, fulfill the, at this point, it's a, a $5.7 million new proposal that we put together, um, which is most big industrialists who hear that think that's a very small amount, but uh, it's more than we have at, on hand. And so we're still looking to raise those funds because we think it's very important uh, to give these types of technologies a chance. You know, our government is putting hundreds of billions of dollars into things like clean coal and other, uh, frankly, boondoggles that aren't going to go anywhere to get us off of uh, the world-destroying, climate-changing fossil fuel system. And what we're wanting to propose is a truly transformational uh, energy direction, something that is out of the box, as it were, from the conventional wisdom. And we know this has been done. If you go to the orionproject.org, you'll see that there's a long history going back about 100 years of people who have done innovative things uh, to develop electromagnetic systems uh, for example, uh, getting uh, turning water, regular water, into a fuel. Uh, but that's through an electromagnetic process of very high voltage pulsed systems that cause water, H2O, to break down into gas and to be burned. Uh, we know those systems uh, were, have worked. We've uh, interviewed and have met with people who built systems like that. Uh, ups, uh, people wonder why they haven't gotten out to the world, and ultimately it's because many of them end up with a national security order on them or they get some kind of threats and intimidation. The reason, as head of the Disclosure Project, uh, I'm doing this and, and I've been uh, interested in doing this, is that 
half of the problem or part of the problem is the technological issue. A big part of the problem is the strategic issue, and that is how to get this out to the world quickly because there are people who don't want that to happen because it's a serious game changer in technology. And so what, looking forward here at 2011, what our real objective is is to either identify someone who has already built such a system that understands that they need to join with a strategic team to move it out so it doesn't just disappear into one of these corporate dustbins uh, and will cooperate with a full evaluation and testing. So that's one of our objectives. The other is, of course, to raise uh, the funds to, to have this facility built and bring these scientists in uh, where we can do this because we, we're certain at this point that within a couple of years, and probably less than that, probably within six to 18 months, we would have some serious breakthroughs in these technologies because we have developed an enormous collection of uh, intelligence and information on how these sort of systems have worked, the kinds of high-voltage systems that result in a generator uh, putting out more energy than, than, goes, than you have to put into it. Uh, and, the, and so it could be a freestanding source of uh, what people call, quote, unquote, free energy. And, uh, you know, a lot of people would, would dismiss this as an urban myth, but the scientific fact is that these systems have been developed over the last 100 years. They keep, uh, however, ending up in the black pit of Calcutta. Uh, and uh, if, if you doubt that, go to the website, the orionproject.org, and look at the American Federation of Scientists report that uh, – uh, recently was released, I think this past fall, Ted, I'm mm -hmm. sure, um, uh, that stated that even some of the solar systems in 1971 uh, were confiscated and had the patents on them seized by the national security provisions uh, uh, abusing the National Security Act. And so we know for a fact that there are at least four or 5,000 or more patents that have been seized this way, um, and it is an abuse of state power. Um, certainly, I seriously doubt uh, anyone in Congress or the president uh, is in favor of seizing something that would solve the global warming and energy crisis uh, from an inventor. But this is happening by these bureaucrats who are really not answering to we the people, but they're answering to some other big industrial interest. Yeah, just to expand on that very briefly, uh, the number from that article that's uh, actually listed and available on the orionproject.org uh, website uh, by a man on the uh, – anyway, the uh, article states there are over 5,000, 5,135 inventions that were under secrecy orders by the end of fiscal year 2010. And just let me read just one sentence from here to give you some sense of things. Under the Invention Secrecy Act of 1951, patent applications on new inventions can be subject to secrecy orders restricting their publication if government agencies believe disclosure would be detrimental to the national security. Uh, that's an interpretation by an agency, and it's, uh, it's been very widely interpreted, put it that way. So, it, yeah, that's correct. So anyone at the CIA or NSA who would surface and say, look, that technology, in our opinion, would be of significance to the national security or detrimental, they just slap an order on it, and the inventor has no recourse. This is what people have to understand. I personally know inventors where this has happened. And, in fact, Dr. Lodi, you can tell them the story of what you saw when you went out to look at the Stan Meyer equipment, that there was a, a type of, uh, f of fluid magnetic uh, toroid yeah, magnetic, generator. Uh, uh, a generator in which uh, Stan Meyer had invented, if you will, and actually had uh, tried to get a patent on it. But uh, it was a device in which a magnetic gas was circulated in a circle uh, around a closed uh, pipe, and uh, coils around it, uh, as uh, magnetic gas passed by, created uh, electrical currents in those coils. And it didn't take much to move the gas, and the power coming out of it was uh, significant, it, it, even at the prototype level. But that uh, never saw the light of day in terms of uh, being developed further because a, a secrecy order uh, was put on it. Yeah, and I think that secrecy order, if I remember right, w w dated back to the 1980s, I believe, 84 or something. Like yeah, that. I can't remember the date, but it's around then, yes. Yeah, and, and there was a scientist that we're working with 
who actually uh, knew, worked with Meyer and knew this for a fact. And so I, I think that what people have to understand is that how do you stand up to that kind of statism, uh, that kind of state power? You've got to have a coalition of people uh, who will stand up to uh, that kind of power and say no. Uh, because what happens is that the small company or inventor out there that's doing this is not going to say no to someone when they come through the door and they flash a badge uh, and they say, look, this belongs to the, the, the – is now property of the United States government. If you speak of this, you're going to go to jail and we're going to fine you and your life is over. Um, and this is not a conspiracy theory. This is a very mainstream group, uh, the, this American Federation of Sciences, who put out this report on the abuse of the National Security Act in this way. Uh, and, 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 in fact, at one point they, they, they even say, what, in, in what way could there be a threat to the national security that there would be a more efficient solar panel that was suppressed in 1971? This has come to light. It's 1971, and this is almost this is 40 years ago now. So. I think that the, the public have to understand that the strategic issues have trumped the technical ones, that there have been technological breakthroughs that would get us off of oil and gas and coal. And it's outrageous. And, you know, as Brian, uh, my friend, astronaut Brian O'Leary often says, the truth will piss you off. Uh, you know, you, you know, it'll set you free, but first it's going to piss you off. I think that, you know, people get very upset about this. But I said, but there is something we can do about it. We can come together. We can learn about these things. And we can put – these scientists who have worked on these sort of systems and know how they work in one place, fund it properly with proper uh, electromagnetic equipment, uh, proper uh, lathes and uh, fabricating equipment, uh, proper project management and security, and come out with one of these things. And absolutely, as head of the project, I would say no if someone presented me to one, with one of these things. I'd say, I do not recognize your authority. I recognize the authority of the people, the President of the United States, and the Congress, and I know those folks, and those folks are not in favor of suppressing this stuff, so go jump on a lake. So in other words, there's this parallel bureaucratic government which asserts its power in defiance of and actually behind the backs of the people, and this is not legal. <clears throat> so just as with the disclosure project, I mean, a lot of people don't understand the legal underpinnings of this, and I think this is what we want to talk about for just a moment. Um, it, it isn't like, um, and I want to distinguish this from something like WikiLeaks. I mean, Wik, WikiLeaks is actually people hacking in and taking files that are properly classified on, you know, diplomatic cables and things like that. That's a very different thing than what we're talking about. We're talking about standing up to something we can prove to be an illegal, secret, parallel government. I want to repeat that, an illegal, secret, parallel government. These are people who, even if the president is called in and wants to be told about this stuff, basically will say no such project exists or go jump on a lake. <clears throat> For example, when, when President Carter wanted to find out about UFOs, he called in the, the outgoing CIA director, uh, George Bush Sr., George Herbert Walker Bush, and, said, and was told, I won't tell you. Flat out. Go get it from the Congressional Research Service if you think they know anything. And this to an incoming president. Now, this, 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 these are the kinds of things that happen. So there are secrets that are kept that are, that are managed in a way that is outside the Constitution and the rule of law. Therefore, by definition, those are rogue programs, very different than – a cable that goes from Hillary Clinton to the Prime Minister of uh, Great Britain or something, if you see what I'm saying. Um, th we're talking about operations that ha have developed over the, the, the since the post-World War II period that have taken on a life of their own and have arrogated to themselves the right to take money and do certain things, no less a figure than uh, Rumsfeld around 9-11. Uh, Donald Rumsfeld stated on the record, and it's in the media, that there's two or three trillion dollars that were uh, missing out of the Department of Defense budget over the last few decades. Trillion dollars. Where did that money go? So w this is what we're talking about. It is, it is <laughs> forget about grand theft or even the Madoff scandal. This is, this is trillions now, not billions. 